Welcome to In The Mix, a DJ series. I'm your host, DJ Rundat. I'm on a mission to inspire and support you in reaching your goals in life and business. Do you want to know the secrets to growing a profitable DJ business? Tune in to hear real life stories from DJs across the globe who have grown successful DJ businesses. Welcome to In The Mix, a DJ series. I'm your host, DJ Rundat. Today, I have a special guest, Frank Smith. What's up, Frank? Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you? I am uh, tired and busy, and but that's good, right after the last year. Right? I know. I, I make this joke that we're out of DJ shape, and I need to get back into it, and you know, things are picking up. All these weekends are filling up like they usually do this time of year, and it's exciting. It's keeping me up at night a little bit. <laughs> but that's a good thing. I had my, I had my first wedding this weekend, and uh, Sunday I woke up, and I just felt it from my, the, my head to my toes. It was, it was miserable. It was oh. nice when it was the day of. But then yeah. the next day I was like, oh, I, I forgot that I'm out of, I'm out of shape for this. Yeah. And that actually reminds me of something that has been on my list of things to get is a mat to stand on. I have not invested in one yet. So <laughs> yeah, I need to do the same thing. Right. I just saw a post recently and it had the mat and it looked good. And um, I'm like, oh yeah, that's another thing. Another thing. There's always more. There's always more we could be adding to our business to work smarter, <laughs> not harder, yeah. take care of our bodies. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, re it's really important, not only just to take care of, you know, your equipment and take care of your, of your business, but you also just got to take care of yourself. You got to take a little time for yourself. Um, people forget, but you really got to give yourself grace. If you wake up and you're tired, relax a little bit that day a little bit more than you normally would and you know the work will still be there in the end and you know, everything will move on it's hard when you're a business owner but it, it's definitely something that, that's important yeah absolutely I think as a business owner you know there's always things we can be doing so there's that feeling like we should be doing something so this year has really taught me the art of like doing nothing I learned the word grace. I practice grace a lot and really feel like when you do slow down uh, and actually like pause and take time to think and just like relax and practice self-care, that's when a lot of the blessings and the gigs come to me. I've learned, I've seen this for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I couldn't agree more. I think, I think the best thing, it, it's so funny, right? This, this horrible thing that we've all dealt with for the last year, but some real blessings have come out of it, you know? getting to spend more time with your family than ever before, or at least in recent years. And then just having a little bit of time for yourself, realizing that, hey, Saturday, I don't have to go gigging. I can just hang back and relax. And we're going to put a movie on as a family. And then I'm going to get to hang out with the wife outside around the fire. Things like that is just so important. And you kind of lose sight of it when you're in that like everyday go, go, go mentality. And I think now everybody's going to learn, okay, like, you know, I still need time for myself. So I have to factor that into my schedule weekly. And uh, yeah, you know, I think it's just really important to do that. Yeah, absolutely. And one thing I love as, you know, having children is when I do get a gig that they can come along with. Um, I usually try to have some other support there so I can juggle both, but um, that's like always nice when you can have some fun with the family, but also work and get paid. Like on Memorial Day weekend, I have a uh, lakeside cabin, uh, two nights, some DJing at the lake and there's like a concert and we get the cabin for three nights and then they're gonna, they got me a second gig. So I get, you know, my lodging for the weekend plus like I get to bring money home. Plus we get to hang out on the lake. And I'm like, this is so awesome. Like, thank you universe for like helping me, you know, mix that work play pleasure. That's like such a win. Plus my family's going to have like a little reunion at the next lake, like 30 minutes down the road. <laughs> and I'm like, yay, you know, <laughs> you get to do a little bit of everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's funny. You bring up when you get to bring your family with you. I, I actually, so we have a photo booth with our company too, where people can, you know, rent, but it's more like an add on. I don't do it as a separate business. And uh, my daughter comes and runs the photo booth sometimes and she's 16. So she's older, you know, but she, she loves it. She loves dressing up. She loves telling adults what to do. She loves laughing at people when they're drunk. I mean, it's so, <laughs> it's so much fun. And, and the first time she went, she was, you know, as a photo booth attendant, you kind of have to be a little 
right? You, you got to be forward with people. Hey, don't touch that or do this and keep it clean. And she's like organizing everything. And uh, so her first time she was really timid and really nervous. And then now she's just like, you know, come over here, stand over here. Everybody smile, make a funny face. Like she's all into it. It's so funny to see that evolution. And then to be able to spend time with my daughter at the same time has been a blessing. Wow, that's so cool because um, this is like a total sign from the universe because uh, my daughter's in the room. She can she could maybe hear us if she's paying attention, but uh, I that's my plan is to add a photo booth as an add-on to my business and have her run it. She's 14 and a half. So then we get to bond, go to the events together and she can work and make money and like get that experience. So that's really cool. Yeah, yeah, it's been a, it's been a lot of fun. The boys, I got seven and eight year old boys too and they really want to come along, but I feel like, buddy, you're a little too young. You can't really pick anything up. You can't move anything. And what are you going to do if this happens or if that happens, you know? And so they're like, no, I want to come, dad. I want to come. You can't just come to jump around and eat some food and dance. <laughs> oh, right? I know my eight-year-old boy wants to come to all the parties too. <laughs> it's funny how that works. Yeah. Yeah. I've gotten, um, I've got him to like actually work when I do my clothing booth, but, but DJing uh, a festival with him is a little hard, but he likes to dance. So, you know, I throw my own little kid parties like in the community for him and all the other little, little kids. Cause they really love it. They really love the music. They love running around. I think it's a positive thing for them. Um, you know, to get introduced to the music and DJing and dancing at a young age. Yeah. Yeah, my uh, my when my daughter was in middle school, she was like, Dad, I don't want you to come DJ our middle school dances. No, you cannot come. And then uh, one of the teachers I went to school with, so she reached out to me and was like, hey, can you come DJ the middle school dance? And I was like, yeah, I'll do it. No problem. And my daughter was like, please, Dad, don't tell them no. Tell them no. Like she was fearful that I would just like ruin her name at school. And uh, so anyway, you know, of course, that's not that's not how it turned out. And then uh, she was like every single dance after that, all of her friends, is your dad coming? Is your dad coming? And then if, if, if it was me, they would be like, oh, can you tell your dad to play this or that or whatever the song was at, at, that, at that moment? So yeah, it's funny how kids kind of, they, <clears throat> they love the dancing, but my daughter was like, no, dad, please stay away as far away as possible. <laughs> Well, yeah, and junior high is such an awkward stage of their lives. <laughs> yeah, I wanted no part of it. I, 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 re I didn't even want to do it, really. I actually didn't, but the, the school was so desperate at the time. Mm -hmm. and, and I just, I was like, okay. And then, of course, like, then I had to do every single one after that. Yeah. Speaking of schools, so you're, you're not only are you a DJ, you're also a host or a co-host of several podcasts and you do different education in the industry. Um, I was remembering when I got to speak at career day at the high school and that was fun and that was a good challenge. They brought me on another time for the be your own boss panel one time. So that was super fun. Um, kind of as what started me in speaking before I even thought about becoming a speaker, which is something I've stepped into in the last year or two. How did you get into speaking in particular? Yeah, so I actually, I started speaking because I, so for my, I, I work for uh, the state of Virginia and part of the, part of my day job gig is that I have to speak at conferences um, about not fun stuff like DJing. And so, you know, I just kind of, I got used to it. I got comfortable. Um, I had a friend who said, Hey, why don't you, you want to do this podcast with me? And it was not, it was not industry related in any way. Um, it's actually a little show called the, my parents lied show. It's like a, it's like a satiric, it's like a comedy show based upon different topics and, and things. So like, it just kind of started rolling and, um, I didn't even think about bringing it into the industry. And as funny as this sounds clubhouse hit, and I was in some clubhouse rooms doing some, uh, you know, just, just kind of popping up on stage speaking and uh, I had a few people that, that speak in the industry reach out to me directly and just say, hey, like, you're really good at this. Why have I never heard of you? Why aren't you coming out and speaking? You should submit a presentation to so-and-so. And, -so. and uh, so then it just kind of opened me up to that, to that thought process. Like, wow, is this something that I can really like take all the skills that I've been trained for my day job and like move it over into the industry? So um, I started reaching out to more people. Um, uh, DJ Jeff and, and me have formed a bond over um, kind of hosting rooms together and speaking in clubhouse together. And uh, yeah, I, I, so that's, that's kind of the next phase of where I'm going. 
Um, I've gotten some really great advice from uh, Big Daddy. Um, I've gotten some really great advice from uh, Joe Bunn and a few other um, industry speakers. And so hopefully you'll start to see me out there soon once we, once we get back to having uh, in-person conferences. Yeah, it's going to happen. I'm a believer. Maybe we'll share a stage. <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah, I know. You and Jess do a really good job with that club on Clubhouse. I have uh, love tuning in and being a guest speaker on that. And um, I think we talked about self-care was one of the last ones I tuned into, which we can go on forever about that one. And uh, lots of good stuff. I, and you know, just this is how I learn a lot is just by interviewing people and having the podcast. I mean, I've learned so much and then it sparks new ideas and I, I get to test new things out because this, this is all about being experimental. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't know that interviewing was a skill that I was, I was good at and you just kind of fall into it and, and then you get better at it. You know, the two big things to interviewing is, is you've got to have, you can't just ask the question, right? You, you have to give a little bit of backstory, even if it's minimal, and then you got to ask the question and then you really just got to listen, you know? And I think that's the thing that some people really botch when they talk about interviewing other professionals is they just, they just kind of, you know, interject too much, or they want to chime in too much. And you really kind of have to, there's a give and take in an interview, you know? And uh, so I've been, I've been able to really hone that skill through, um, I, do, I do the Crate Hacker podcast um, with Tyler Wallace and Mike Villa, and of course, the rest of the guys, depending on if they show up um, <clears throat> for those. And uh, we have a lot of really cool guests on that. And then uh, I also do Wedding Business Growth with David Hanscom, and with um, Nick Sangiamo, Nick is, um, David's of course a DJ, um, Nick is a videographer, and we, we have wedding professionals um, on all the time. We just had Sam Jacobson, who is, um, you know, a mark or a basically kind of like a branding and, and sales expert. And, uh, you know, the interview was so smooth, but two years ago, you probably would have been like, oh, I can't watch this guy interview anybody. It's terrible. Well, I still laugh at myself. Like I'm still learning it. Sometimes I just fumble on my words. I draw blanks. Like, all, I mean, you know, it's just, it's such a learning process. And I really believe in just throwing yourself in the fire and like learning as you go. <laughs> it's, so. it's, it's the best way of handling it though. You know, I, I think um, you can go to all the schools and take all the classes, right. And get all the certificates for whatever it is that you want to do. But until you get out there and you start doing it, you don't think about those things, you know? Um, I, how many weddings have you fumbled somewhere and then you learned and you were like, never again will I forget extra batteries or never again will I forget to double check all the names with the, with the wedding party before I announce them. You know, it's those little things, I think that people, you know, you, you, there's just nothing better than life experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I look forward to tuning into, into those podcasts. I haven't, I didn't know that Crate Hackers had a podcast. That's got to be probably pretty new. Um, we've been doing it for about three months now. It's on Thursday. So we do it live and then we post it in podcast format afterwards. Um, so for a while we were just kind of interviewing, um, you know, industry people. So, you know, Nick, Nick Han was on there from Promo Only. Um, uh, Fletcher Price from DJ Event Planner. Uh, we've had a bunch of different guests. And then recently we tried to kind of take it in another direction and have some branding people, have some marketing people come on. Um, but now I think we've kind of just reset and we're just going to focus back in on the Crate Hacker stuff for now. Uh, talking a little bit more about the app, a little bit more about the product and where we are and where we're going. Um, but it's every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, the hackathons, which are the, you know, the ones that I think a lot of people tune into where you're making that crate together. That's on Tuesdays. So the podcast is on Thursdays. Mm. Nice. Good to know. Good to know. I'll have to tune in. I, I was going to try to be on there. I think that was yesterday, but it didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't get to see it either. And I, I was actually pretty disappointed. I didn't get to tune in because they had an amazing slate of DJs on, on that DMF hackathon. It was crazy. Uh-huh. Yeah, so fun. I mean, there's endless work we could be doing with our crates. Um, I'm curious, like, so what would be your go-to crate? Say you get to play your own party and you get to do just Frank style. What would it be like? Oh, this is going to say, this is actually really bad, uh, just to be completely honest, because nobody would dance to it. But I'm like a diehard, like, 90s alt rock and 90s metal fan. 
And so like me and all my homies that I grew up with would be like completely vibe into it. And other people would just be like, yeah, okay, it's time to go. Um, so I know that sounds really funny, but yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge, huge 90s alt rock fan. Right on, rock on. I remember it a little bit because I was in high school in the 90s and um, definitely remember it a little bit, but I, yeah, if I ever need anybody in that category, I'm going to call you because that is a category that is not my strong category. Yeah, yeah, no, for <laughs> sure. It's, it's so funny, right? Like I think people, <clears throat> the, like the most influential part of your life is that middle school, high school phase, you know, and early adulthood. And that's just for me, you know, that was, that was the 90s. So um, you know, if it wasn't Bush or Pearl Jam or Live or Nirvana, you know, it was Metallica, it was Megadeth. And so it's actually really funny. The very first time I ever DJed ever, and I, I wouldn't even call it DJing now, but I was really just like a, a guy with a iPad. <clears throat> uh, somebody knew I had a PA system and they were just like, hey, can you come and play some music at my wedding? I was like, yeah, okay, that sounds fun. And I show up with just an iPad full of what I thought like they would want but then it also had all of my stuff on it. So I start playing the things that they pointed out and they were like, um, nobody's dancing. And it was all, it was, they really were into like big, like um, they were big Skrillex fans and stuff like that. But that was the two of them. Right. And like, as we all know, like, and as I know now, <clears throat> it's not all about just their own music too. Like they have to be considerate of their guests. So they were like, well, can you play some uh, Beyonce? Like this iPad has 90s alt rock, 90s metal, and then this, like all this dub stuff that they wanted at the time. And I was like, ooh, yeah. So then I just started downloading <laughs> music. It was such a train wreck. And then uh, after that, <clears throat> um, you know, I, I went to my wife and I was like, hey, I think, I think I'm going to do this, but I'm going to have to spend a lot more money than this little PVPA system that I have and an iPad because this is just <laughs> work. And uh, so that was... Uh, that was 16 years ago now. And um, yeah, it's just kind of progressed forward. And, you know, it, it's funny how the industry like changes you when you don't expect, like you don't really know, and then you start to learn, you know, and then it's just kind of like, I, I didn't even know those doors were even doors, you know? And it's been really interesting as I've kind of went through and learned more and met more people and realized that this group, this, this, family of DJs. This community of DJs is huge and there's so much to learn out there. And uh, that's why I do stuff like this. I mean, I follow, you know, I follow you too. And, uh, you know, it's, it's been, it's been an adventure, like learning everybody. Oh yeah, absolutely. And like, it's been really fun doing these series because, um, I've interviewed people and like later learned like, oh my gosh, I did not know like they throw their own conference like, uh. <laughs> or you know, different things. I'm like, I had no idea. Like, I, I'll be honest, I don't always do my research prior. I don't have a lot of time. I got a lot of things I'm juggling always. And, uh, and so it's just been really cool to connect this way virtually. That was one of the bigger things, you know, bigger positives out of this last year or so was all the connecting virtually, growing the community, getting familiar with people, you know, in our industry, learning from each other. It's really, really been cool. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't, uh, there was a guy who moved into our area. He said, Hey Frank, like this community of DJing is so much different than what you know. And I'm just thinking, I don't even know what you're talking about, you know, and invites me to one Facebook group and another. And then I didn't, I didn't know about conferences or expos or anything like that. Like I had no clue any of that happened in this industry. I show up at DJ expo and my mind just like, boom, it's just blown. I'm like, I had no idea that this is how this whole industry works. And it just changed my perspective completely. And then I was like, you know what? Like I got to grind it out. Like I got to get better at this because I am nowhere near what I thought I was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. I mean, so much room for growing. It's like, it's cool, like to be like, wow, I, I've made it this far, not knowing not even having that online DJ community. And now that we're tuned in tapped into it, like there's so much growth we can have, you know, expansion. It's like, it's really cool. Also, what I love is like been interviewing the DJs that have been doing it for like, more than 40 years like that gives me a lot of hope um I definitely think I will always DJ until I like maybe mentally am not capable 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I talk to my wife all the time. I'm like, look, I, I'm on a path to retirement with my day job. And as soon as that happens, supplemental income needs to still be this DJ business, um, you know, or else, or I mean, right. As, as we all know, like retirement is different for, for us and we kind of have to prepare differently. And so I'm like, I really need this DJ business to do what I need it to do. And, um, you know, learning from all the other people who have been in the industry for, for way longer than me that have been way more successful than me has been, has been a blessing because um, there's, no, there's no real school you can go to, right, to be a successful DJ business owner. Um, not, not one. You can't just, you know, go to Harvard and, and become a lawyer, right? You can't go to Harvard and become a DJ. So you really have to work hard and you have to learn a lot of different aspects. You know, you're a business owner, you're a marketer, your branding, your messaging, your sales, your day of. I mean, that's a lot of things that normally businesses don't have one person doing all of it. And we really have to learn how to do a lot of different things. Even when we outsource, we have to learn how to do a lot of different things. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and you know, you can't really grow alone. You know, we need, we need each other. We need team. Um, and something that has come up in these interviews recently was the idea of, building a company that you can actually sell. And so I've umbrellaed so much under just DJ run that. And now I've got my, my wheels turning on. Well, maybe I want to grow it into a, a different company that I could eventually sell, you know, if I wanted to, even though I want to DJ forever, but you know, it's just like, there's endless ideas and yeah, creating that passive income. It's definitely a goal of mine too. I've done a digital course, you know, wrote my book, but like, there's so many creative ways. And um, I love seeing what the DJ community has been doing in the last couple of years since I really tuned in with the different membership sites and different coaches and all of it. You know, it's, it's really great to give back. It feels good. And it's nice to know that there's actually people out there that want to help yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think the, that's, that's one of the really funny things, right? Is um, you've, got, you've got a group of people that are like, do it like this and you can be just like me. Right. But then you also have the other group of people who are really taking their time to say, like, this is what made me successful. These are the things that I did. These are the things that I learned. Um, you know, take it and make it work for you. However, it however that works, you know, and, and it's, you know, everybody wants to get rich, get rich quick thing. Right. But at the same time, when you're a business owner, you know, if it's not just right place, right time and the stars align perfectly, you know, you kind of have to work a little, a lot harder than that. And so, you know, I, I think that it's, uh, I think that that's something that I really appreciate from the DJ community is, is um, the, the, uh, w the willingness to share knowledge is there, you know, um, I, I, I look at other um, event in uh, event professional fields, and I feel like there's a lot more of the pay me a ton of money so I can teach you my secrets. And I feel like in the DJ field, while some of that's there, and it, but it's not prevalent. And it's also, you know, it's also not like you can't reach out to those same people and they'll probably take a minute to talk to you, you know? So I, I really, I really appreciate this community of professionals that we've got in this industry. Yeah, me too. Me too. And it's, it's just like, yeah, for people that haven't tapped into it, tap into it, go find your people online, join the Facebook groups. Um, join the membership sites, listen to the podcast, the information's out there, all of it. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a lot of great people. I mean, <clears throat> you know, uh, I don't, I, I'm not going to sit here and name drop who, who I, who I like to talk to, right. Cause everybody has their own people, but that's the thing is, you know, the people who I started talking to at first, they didn't progress with me. And I found other groups of people that, that spoke more my language and, and, you know, kind of helped me out and, and, there's so many of us that you're going to find people that can be in your own group, right? So it's just like, take that time to reach out, to, to you know, conversate. If, if it's your people, lock in and make them your people. And if they're not your people, that, that's cool. Like not everybody's made for everybody and it's okay. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I was like cyber bullied in one of the groups when I first started interacting, I guess. And I put a post out and I got, I just got, I don't even know. I just got, I mean, just got some real jerks up in there making some comments that were just like, is this really necessary? Like nobody was answering my questions and like, I'm like, okay guys, you just want to criticize me or does somebody want to answer my question? You know? And I, 
And I felt like crap. I felt like crap for a good day. I luckily had my business coach to um, support me during that, you know, like, okay, well, you know, you're, 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 you don't need to listen to them. They're not your people. And like, um, but I think in a way, sometimes those type of situations will fuel you to do more, you know, it's like, you might not have known who I was then, but you probably know who I am. Yeah. Now. <laughs> yeah. And jokes on you fella or, or sis or whoever. Yeah. yeah. It, it's funny. Those groups, um, those social media groups can be really like harsh sometimes. And I don't even understand why anybody would waste their, t I don't have time to post something mean, you know, if I'm not posting something helpful or asking a question for myself, I'm just going to keep scrolling. But there have been a couple of times where I felt like, you know, it was just appropriate for me to say something because, um, you know, uh, I saw a post, I saw, I don't remember what it was about, but I saw a post from DJ Rachel um, one time and oh my gosh, the, the response that this one person gave, I don't even remember who they were. It was terrible. I mean, it was just horrible. And, and I just felt like, you know, and not that I was the only person that, that spoke up, but right. I just felt like, oh my gosh, like, what are we doing here? You know? And I know this is, you know, your show, but it's really, I, I've noticed it's really challenging to, to be a female in this industry sometimes. And it's, it's unnecessary. And it, I, I mean, I don't know, I'm not sure how you dealt with it, you know, but it, it's just unnecessary just in general to me, you know, everybody's here because guess what? Like the definition of a DJ is play music. <laughs> it's not scratch. It's not know everything about your equipment. It's not being the best this or that. That's none of it. If you look it up, it's a person who plays music. We all do that. Whether one of us does that by pressing play on iTunes or the next person does that by having their, their 1200s out and they're spinning and scratching and mixing and going crazy. We're all DJs, you know? So why like why the approach it's just it I don't, I don't understand it it just seems like a waste of energy yeah I agree absolutely and I, I truly believe like you know we are artists and we get to do things our way that's our unique gift right there is how I'm how I'm going to select my music and how I'm going to play that music that's me as an artist using my creativity my skill set where I'm comfortable with you know <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Me and Jess had a long, me and DJ Jess had a long conversation about this. And, um, you know, it's kind of why we both came together uh, uh, with, with the clubhouse group was just, we, we felt like, you know, this is an equal playing field and we're going to make a place, we're going to make our own place where it's an equal playing field. And, and so we made it in clubhouse and it feels really good because it doesn't matter who comes in and how much knowledge you have or don't have and how much years you have or don't have, like none of that matters in the club come in, join our room, raise your hand. If you think the question is dumb, it is not dumb. There's no stupid question. Come up and ask it. Somebody will answer, whether it's me and Jess or somebody else on the, you know, up on the stage. I mean, it's just, it's really weird how um, this industry in some, in some aspects like lacks inclusivity because it's, it's really important um, to give everybody an equal shake, you know, and, and sometimes it just doesn't feel like that happens. And, it's pretty disheartening, but, uh, you know, as more of us continue to do things like this and, and, and speak out of, speak out about it the way that we all do, I, I think that, you know, we're going to continue to progress it forward and, uh, hopefully more people feel comfortable to raise their hand when they need to. Yeah, I agree. And I, I think part of, you know, my mission is, is in the reason why I do more than just, I'm um, just the DJ is because someone's got to lead by example and take those risks and put themselves out there in the way that I do. Um, and Rachel does and lots of, you know, Jess does and different people we get involved because, uh, you know, we got to show other women and people, not just women <laughs> that, Hey, look, if I can do this, you can do this, you know? And I I'm curious. So why do you think, um, that it is a male dominated industry. I'll share with you after you answer why it took me so long to start DJing, but it was a dream I had forever and I eventually made it happen. But I'm curious what, what you're, what you think. Yeah. So, you know, I, I don't know if it's, you know, I, I don't know if it's something as little as, you know, it, it's, it's a bunch of, you know, equipment that like, cause right. Like by default people connect like 
um, tech items and things like that just automatically in their minds to guys. So I don't know if maybe that's where it started. I don't know if it was just something where it was, you know, maybe maybe early on, maybe women didn't want to do it quite as much. And maybe now it's kind of become where it's it's more the music is more diverse. And, and I think maybe people are more comfortable in their own skin. I'm not too sure. See, it's funny because I work in a female dominated industry in my day job. And so I'm like one of the rare out of a guy that you don't normally see. Actually, my last two day jobs, I worked in daycare for eight years. And so that's, of course, female dominated industry. And then I work in social services. And that's a very female dominated industry. Um, so, you know, it, it's, it's funny because, uh, you know, I don't know that there's a reason why guys choose not to do it. Maybe it's the level of compassion you have to have at like a social services and, and you know, guys just by nature don't always have that the same way that women do. Women do. Um, but but I, I don't know why I think that it's the other way around in this industry, because to me, like music touches everybody. And, and right. Typically, I mean, and I'm sure you agree with me on this. Typically more women dance than guys at most events. So it would make sense to have like female DJs in the industry, but yeah, you're right. I mean, for a long time, you didn't see it at all. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I've had my own little ideas. Like, well, one of them I thought, you know, these are just ideas. I don't like fully think this is why, but one idea was like, well, women weren't working. Women weren't owning their own businesses and we're going way back you know we've only been able to vote for 100 years so we weren't treated like individual humans like you know so kind of can go way back to that you know women were home with the babies or that's going old school for me um i was gifted turntables in high school but i was intimidated by the technology i um you know, didn't feel strong to carry like big speakers. Speakers to me back then were these giant things. And then you had the amps and you had lots of different plugs and wires and all of that. And then the vinyl was heavy. I always collected vinyl because I like to play on my dad's record player, but like, it just didn't happen. I didn't want it enough, even though I made friends with all the DJs, all the rappers, all the graffiti artists, like all the skaters, like all, all the people, you know, I love the whole culture of like music. And, um, so for me, it just took, I guess, the right timing and really wanting it and having my husband who, who was a good teacher and willing to teach me and like, let me kind of shadow him. So. Yeah. Well, that's, that's interesting, but it's, it's a really, it's a testament to like your will to do this, you know, and a lot of people, a lot of people don't have that will. They, they, oh, I want to DJ. And then they, oh yeah, I'm going to start DJing. And then next thing you know, like you never hear from them again. And then you see them on Facebook a year later and they're doing the next thing, you know, whatever that is. And so it's interesting that like, you know, you had other things stacked against you on your path to doing this, that, that, you know, maybe other people don't have. And to, to hear how, about how you like knocked all that down and said, no, like DJ Rundat, here I am you know, like regardless is, is an awesome, awesome testimonial for, for, for people, you know, whether like even male or female, right? Like it doesn't even matter. I mean, that's an awesome testimonial just to say like, no, I knew this is what I wanted. I was nervous and it took me a while to get going. But once I did like, boom, now, now who doesn't know DJ run that, right? <laughs> right. The funny thing was, is I, gave myself the name minus the DJ part uh, before I finally started DJing and people were like, where'd you get that name? And I'm like, I just listened to so much reggae dance hall and they're always saying run that, run that. And it means we run things and it's a slang and I like it and it's sassy. And like, I mean, I do run some stuff and I was always running. I was never <laughs> slowing down for ever until like this last year. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, that's yeah. I thought that's how it happened. I, I thought it was really cool. I saw the um the the Women's Day, the women or um the national or maybe it was the International Women's Day uh, stream that you all did, and uh, that was my first time seeing a lot of. Like I said, I haven't been out there quite as long. I got into the, I got into this community towards the end of 2019 when I went to the expo for the first time, and then COVID hit, and it was like I couldn't even communicate other than on here with the community, so. I didn't have an opportunity to see or, or like watch everybody. So Jess was like, you should tune in. You know, we've got this awesome stream we're doing. And, uh, you know, I watched 
I had no clue that like reggae dance hall was your stuff, right? Like I didn't know. I mean, I knew who you were. I saw you in the groups and stuff, but I, I had no clue. And so when I watched your set, I was like, wow, like the name is so much more applicable now than it was even before. I thought it was like you said, like a sassy little, I run that. I had no clue it connected to your style of play. <laughs> yeah, I joked that my first marriage was to reggae music. <laughs> 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 yeah um if you read my book it talks about when I was 18 I went to Jamaica and I got robbed by knife point trying to buy records in Montego Bay wow yeah wow and then and you're still committed to reggae even after all that <laughs> it's such happy music positive music uh the roots reggae and um and I just, it's, it's been a part of my, my whole life, my community. So I, yeah, I'm, I'm committed to it, but I also, I love all the other stuff. I love mashing it all up. I like when they blend the genres start to blend more. I like, you know, there's a thing called future dance hall, which is more like electronic, uh, dance hall and, um, really fun, really fun in the Mumba tone. I love all that. So yeah, that's cool. I'm glad you got to tune into that. That was such a fun event. I was on the whole day too. And I was the last one. I think someone came on after me because of the scheduling thing. Yeah, Aaron did. But um, but yeah, it was a ton of fun. I actually put that mix online because I was like, I, I listened back that same night because Jess was like, wow, Michelle, your, your set was so on brand. And I listened back and there was so much talk about like kings and queens and like getting after it and like follow your dreams. And I just was like, I was like, this, this was good. This was a good one. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Actually, um, like a funny, completely off topic story. But um, in 2008, I went to, uh, I went to Amsterdam and uh, for, for, for the cannabis cup this past life but anyway um and uh yeah so I, I, when they do the like the end celebration you know they have like a lot of people on stage a lot of famous people on stage and so um sensi uh sensi love was there who is the daughter of bunny uh bunny whaler and uh one of bob's sisters um so so like you know she was with an arm's reach and then uh out to per, like the closer for the for the cup that year was uh, Andrew Tosh, Peter's son. And I mean, he was, you know, I was like floored, you know, he's out there singing his dad's songs. And it was like, you know, in, in the full like Jamaica army regalia too. It was, it was crazy. It was a crazy experience to, to be a part of it. And, uh, you know, and just to be like that close, because I think, you know, no matter how deep you go with reggae, right? Like everyone knows Bob clearly, you know what I mean? So if you ever feel like you were like close to that presence, you know, it was, it was amazing. And I know, like I said, I know that's an off topic story, but it's one of those experiences that like will live with me forever. So I was on stage with Bob's wife, Rita, when I was a little girl, she yeah. came with some of the Marley boys, uh, Damien, Julian, I think Steven might've been there. And um, I was very young and Judy Mowat was with her. Those are two of the three little birds of the ITELs. And she pulled us all up on stage because see, I was blessed with these venues growing up, just one here in Humboldt County, Northern California, and one in Sonoma County in Petaluma, where it was all ages. So I, I mean, that's something I absolutely love about reggae is you can get up close and personal. Like they're easily accessible and it's this underground community. It's like, an, oh, it was a real underground community family vibe and it's grown with like Sean Paul who I'm also friends with who like it's like you you it it's 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 like it's hard to explain it but it's so special it's so special and that gave me a lot of confidence later in life um that if there's something you really really want you can get it like you want to meet Rita Marley like you want to be on stage like I've opened up for Stephen Marley you know I've I've been to you know so it's like that's something super special about the reggae world. And I think that kind of hooked me in because it was more than just music. It was a vibe. It was an energy. It was a culture. It was underground. It was special. Like even to this day, um, this past year, the reggae DJs on Twitch, they're going all day, all night long. You jump in there. They're like, run that. Yes. <laughs> and then the emotes are going crazy and it's a lot of fun. That's, that's awesome. You know, it, it's funny because like, that's the vibe that the music gives off, you know, but of course me not knowing any of those people or ever experiencing like those relationships, it's really crazy to hear that, 
you know, cause right. Not every, not every music, not every musician like lives their stuff. You know what I mean? It's like, here's some really cool music, but like what I do on my off time is totally different. And uh, so it's really interesting to hear that like, you know, reggae music uh, and, and the culture behind it is like, is authentic and real, you know, and that it wasn't just, for example, like the pictures that you see or the videos that you see of Bob Marley, you know, going through different streets and celebrating everyone who was there, um, you know, along with him. It's, it's the whole community of, of the artists and, the, and, you know, and the non-artists too, I'm sure the same way. Yeah. Yeah. Jamaica is a wild, wild, wild place. Um, I think everyone should experience it. Uh, um, everyone can sing. It's pretty cool. Like your taxi driver, <laughs> like too many pahos, pahos. And you're just like all over these crazy roads, like praying. <laughs> that is hilarious. My parents went to Jamaica uh, one time and my dad formed a friendship with a guy who was, um, I think he was one of the one of the waiters at like the the resort that he was that they were staying at and um you know he would call him regularly it was so crazy and I, I you know I got to talk to him and say hi I didn't go on that trip it was like a it was my parents only but uh, I mean he talked to him for years it was crazy and I'm like just some random guy you met he was like I don't know man it's just like different it felt different there I was like wow that's you know it's a cool experience that I haven't I haven't gotten to experience yet but I definitely should yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I, I was as fortunate, just like my mom moved us to deep in the woods of Northern California and they had reggae on the river and this venue, this community center. And, you know, that's the main music they were bringing in because of the cannabis, because we're known for reggae on the river, cannabis and ancient redwood trees. So yeah, it's like, it's just been a, a part of growing up here. I got lucky with that, with the music and cannabis. <laughs> in the yeah, yeah, it's a definitely a different experience. Over here in Virginia, it's uh, country music and, uh, you know, cow fields and, you know, it's a little different. So getting into the DJ world, uh, you know, the music that people are like growing up with around here is definitely not what I'm playing anywhere. <laughs> we got country and reggae here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, country, you know, it's, it's one of those things that people want to hear, but around here, like in this area that I'm in, we have UVA, University of Virginia is right next door and JMU, which is another big college and then Virginia Tech. So like a lot of people come back to this area for their for their weddings or their celebrations. And so, you know, it's not a lot of Virginia natives that I'm like DJing for. I'm primarily a wedding DJ. So a lot of those people that are coming in uh, to this area are, you know, like five, 10 year graduated from college kids with all their college friends coming in. And then, of course, their families. So you know, a lot of what I, a lot of what I'm by default having to play is, you know, just like a lot of top 40. That's what a lot of these kids or these people that, that are getting married now, I say kids, like they're still kids. Um, you know, a lot of these people that are getting married now, that's what they want to hear is that, is that, um, you know, top 40. So right. Play, play what they want. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I love that about our jobs, you know, is we get that variety with every client's different, every couple, we get to experience like a lot of different genres and, and, um, and country is definitely big here. So I've definitely got a collection. It's one I can always grow, but I grew up listening to country on the radio. It was one of our only two stations. So country and reggae. Yeah, basically when I left here, I was in Wranglers and tie dyes. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. I could I could see DJ Rundat in Wranglers and tie. <laughs> That'd be awesome. They were bubblegum pink Wranglers, and it was a Grateful Dead tie dye. That's how like, yeah, how funny <laughs> it was growing up here in the woods. Um, That's funny. Well, yes. Well, um, thank you so much for being on the show. How can we find you online and best support you? Yeah, yeah. So you can find me a couple of different ways. You, you can find me either on Instagram at DJ Frank Smith. So super easy to find there. Um, a little harder to find on Facebook just because, uh, you know, there's a million Frank Smiths in the world. <laughs> so it's, it's DJ Frank Smith VA on Facebook. But again, on, uh, on IG is probably the easiest way to do it. Um, so that's how you can kind of track what I'm doing and where I'm going. Uh, you'll kind of start to see a, a little bit of an adventure into like business consulting uh, that, that's coming around the corner with a couple of other people that I think a lot of people in the industry know. So be on the lookout for that uh, by following the IG. You can find me on Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern 
by going to wedding uh, WBG Live, which is uh, .com, which will take you straight to a Facebook group. So you can watch Wedding Business Growth with me and David Hanscom and Nick Sangiamo. And then on Thursdays, if you're a Crate Hacker member, you can find me um, on the Crate Hacker podcast at 8 p.m. So those are the easiest ways to find and support. Okay, awesome. Well, looking forward to hearing more about the business consulting because I d dabble in that too because I just love talking business. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll have to talk offline about that then. Yeah, absolutely. Great. All right, well, thanks everyone for tuning in. We'll see ya. Thanks, bye. bye.